It won't be appropriate to start this one with the peace greeting either. Let me start off with gratitude, though. I would like to thank Deshaun for coming through on that cash app. That was very generous of you. I mean that from the bottom of my black heart, from the depths of my black mind. Thank you. I also... Um, I also want to um, tell you all that um, my thanks goes to Raul of Please Act Right because of something that he elevated. In his recent upload, there was something that a sister showed, and this is what we have to pay attention to, and this is why we should have left decades ago. The video is entitled women gives men best advice ever and doesn't even know it. I'm going to let you hear to what I am referring. Fair use. Open up all your options to anybody you want to date. The same thing her and women like her said to the passport bros. Passport bros. Can y'all just go? I mean, what's taking you so long? And I just want to say thank you, brother, for your support. You're welcome. To give context, he's talking about the video that I did where I showed the black women with their non-black partners. It was three of them. And I really appreciate that because here's the thing. And here we go. Yep. There's nothing that black men can do about it, about black women opening up their options to other groups of men. Hold on. Let me now, can somebody that. help me out here? The comment says, please go. Open. There's nothing that black men can do about it. There's nothing you can do about black women opening up their options to other groups of men. Now that right there is why it is that even these men of other races do not refer to them as just bitches or hyena bitches. I am not saying these things. I'm telling you that other men will say they will simply call them nigger bitches or black bitches. These are things even I don't say about black women. I've been somewhat lucky in certain things in my life, but I realize that while I've been treated, romantically speaking, I've been treated as less than by most sisters. Um, I also realize that um, to a certain extent, I've also been fortunate in terms of how they care for my kids. My children's mothers um, are good, loving mothers. They don't always know everything, me just like I don't, but they are good, loving moms. And they share gainful information, things I need to know. Um, and I've been generally fortunate to have good kids as well. Now, there are things I have to try to struggle to get some of them to understand, but that's normal. However, I also want to state this too. And my um, my son's mother never treated me as an inferior to other men, as far as I know. I think, well, subconsciously, but not consciously, nothing aware, nothing malicious. She didn't do that. Um... But let me also state this. Most importantly, she's a good mom. But many of us, all of us actually, have known some sisters that just have to talk down to you and belittle you in some mother cuss word way. Even if you're not starting an argument, you might even agree with them. You may say, well, this is a right you have. That's right. That's that's my right. And therefore... Uh, whatever you whatever decision you make is okay as long as you deal with the consequences. I, I got the consequences. I'll do it. I, I know I got the rights. I don't need you to tell me. You can't even agree with sisters. If they get a suspicion in mind about you having done something, you can't tell them you didn't do it. And this is one of the things that is traumatizing about being raised by these sisters. And a lot of you see, I know I wasn't raised by someone like this with all that neck rolling and attitude. And I know my mom's mistakes. 
I'm aware of them. But I didn't have to deal with this. On occasion when she got angry, this would come out. I didn't have to deal with abuse, though, not emotional abuse and not physical abuse. Now, granted, my dad was a stabilizing force, too. But I can tell you now that in a nutshell, no, most of you had to deal with this and a hell of a lot worse. And you've, some of you have had to deal with this from your moms, from your aunts, from your grandmothers, from your older sisters when you weren't even arguing. That's why it is that Derek Jackson felt the way he did, not hated, just alone. That's because you can see this side of even your sisters, but you don't get to see that other side. That's what the issue is. And I'm sick and tired of seeing brothers have to deal with this. This is why accountability commentary has a no Keisha policy on his channel, meaning no women at all. Becky Marie ain't welcome either, but definitely not sisters. I don't have the same policy because I don't need it. I've had, I've been here long enough to wear there's kind of an inbuilt filter already on my channel uh, so that um, the ladies and the lionesses could come in and say something. I've had enough experience to actually know which one is generally speaking to know which one is which. But the hyenas, they're already repelled by my channel. And I'm not going to get into debates with them anyway. Uh, in most cases, if so, it's going to be on my channel because they could disagree. But if they keep interrupting, I hit the mute button. I'm going to finish my point and then I will unmute the button so that they can respond to it and then make their point so we can take turns. But I have to use the mute button to enforce that we will take turns talking. No harm meant. But they're not apt to listen. And a lot of human beings in general are not really apt to listen. But the Bedouin and the, uh, the Western black woman and some continental sisters are the absolute worst at listening. You finish nothing when you talk to them. If they think you did something, but you're innocent, you can't even explain the evidence that shows them you're innocent because they keep cutting you off, interrupting. The worst is when they dismiss you, mm -hmm, cut the eyes, look away, and you don't even know if they heard something that you may have just said, like you could even ask someone, mm -hmm, and they look away, wait. That's when you have to realize sometimes they didn't hear you just say who they could ask to find out where you were. They're not hearing what you say. They may understand it if they hear it, but they don't hear it. Therefore, they don't understand it because they're, they're closed minded. Their brains are locked. They're stuck on stupid. Because they just have to get you told. So when brothers ain't even disagreeing, like, look, you can do that. She has to say, I appreciate your support because there ain't nothing you could do. I'm going to go ahead and tell this bitch. I don't support it. We have the right and you don't, not because of um, what it sounds like on the surface, but because of what you sisters have said yourselves. I know I'm a real light skinned brother. Now, you know, I tend to forget that I'm light skinned sometimes. I'll crack jokes about being the blackest of the black. Damn it, my name is Black Mind. But I'm aware, at least when I think about it, I'm aware that I'm quite pale. And uh, by comparison, I'm not Sean King pale. And I'm aware that my hair was not any evidence back when I had hair of me being of African origin. I'm aware of that. And I saw how sisters acted towards me. That's one of the ways that I know how disrespectful they are towards most of you brothers. <laughs> A lot of y'all don't realize how disrespectful they get. I had to deal with that. I was one of about four dudes I knew in my hometown, as I mentioned before. There were some others had to deal with outright disrespect. Didn't even realize all the time it was disrespectful because sometimes they would act like, well, you know, we we're, we're not as loose with you because we respect you. They even had one of my partners saying that. Snap said that one time. I said to him, man, I can tell, I remember saying, I can tell they don't respect me unless they heard about me getting into them fights. And he was like, no, X. Back then, they called me X after Malcolm X. 
He was like, no, ex, sometimes, man, they don't sleep with you because they respect you. And here's the thing. I wasn't trying to smash. Sisters came up with a way of saying no without you even asking. They're so good at that. So I picked up from that, and that's actually what I was complaining about. I wasn't talking about if I tried to hit that. I was talking about without me even trying. Trying to go out with her, maybe. But not trying to smash. I already knew you try that, they make a phone call. And he was sitting up and saying, well, you know, sometimes they don't do that because they respect you. And I, I, he thought that. Years later, though, he admitted, you know what, man, you you ain't got to worry about uh, trying to get with him. You ain't got that thug in you. And they ain't going to go for that. Now, he wasn't talking about I ain't got no warrior in me. I'd already had fights. He'd seen it. He was talking about I don't have the th at this point. It was about you not having any felonies. And looking like you don't even have any felonies. Now, it's about more than what I've dealt with. It's about what you've dealt with, too. But this in particular is it. It's that way that they have of just without you even arguing, they have a way of trying to show you that they dominate you and they run shit. And they high five each other based on this. Even when they do choose one of you with whom to spend their lives, they have to show their family or even the women of your family that they don't take you too seriously. And that's why at a family reunion, whether it's yours or hers, she ain't making you no play. Now, granted, I'm kind of a picky eater, especially if soul food's on the menu, because there's certain things I don't want. I don't like beans. I don't like peas. And as you know, pork predators and people are off the menu for a Muslim. Well, whole lot of pork. So I don't mind making my own plate because of that. But the fact is that sisters have this thing where they they ain't going to make you no plate, especially with somebody else looking. A lot of sisters don't mind telling you that they treat day man well. But black women shouldn't have to do X and Y and Z. And and really what they mean is treat they man well. They'll, it, you, sometimes they'll say, oh, no, I treat my man well, but. And that's how they gloss over the fact that they're willing to do what it takes to keep a man, but they don't want to come out and say that women should have to behave in such a way that a man might want to stay just like they demand that men do towards women. Because what is blasphemous to the hyenocracy is to say that there is actually equality on a human level. That's blasphemous to them because we are their property in their eyes. And that's why they talk down even when we agree with them. You're never an adult and you're never free. And that's why I don't think the black woman should be running daycares. Let them have a white men if the white men will take them. I think they really uh, should be with other non-black, non-white men. I think that's really where they should go. But then again, you know what? Those dudes would just leave them, actually. A lot of times they may pop them once on the butt, once on the face or something, then they'll leave them. It's Brad who owns the legal system that will go ahead and even though he's raised not to hit women, he will turn around and hit one of them because he doesn't fully see them as women when they get to raise in their voice and that he should not. He should not view them as actual ladies when they get to raise in their voice and interrupting and neck rolling and finger snapping. Shouldn't see them as such. But the thing is, it don't take much for Brad to go off on a sister either. Notice this. They will get abused by a Wyatt man quicker, more quickly than even a Latina or an Asian woman. If they want to talk about being the least protected and the most disrespected, it ain't the black man doing it. Oh, no, we already know. You're not seeing a whole bunch of these wives get in trouble because they beat up their Asian wife or their Asian girlfriend or their Latina girlfriend. You don't see a whole bunch of them going through that. No, we see them to the point where they're even getting arrested because they're getting caught because they're not hiding it for doing what they're doing to sisters. Or they leave and the sister can't take it and offs the kid. Yeah, that happened. But it's this insistence upon getting you told even when you're not arguing 
that is the reason why, gentlemen, you have to make your, whether your channel is or not, you have to make your romantic and marital life a no Keisha zone. Unless she is accomplishing what Simone Biles has accomplished looks like your type, and then comes for you. That's the time that I say, you know what, go ahead. And even then, she needs to come from a family. Simone Biles had a dad to walk her down the aisle. And I can understand why Jonathan Owens may have been shedding some tears at his wedding. He found something in someone special, and she came to, she messaged him first. I can understand that if she's his type, good. See, what I understand about him saying that had she not messaged him, he would have overlooked her. It's not because she wasn't cute. It's not that at all. I mean, to me, she's cute. I have a slightly different type, but her teeth are flawless and perfectly white. She takes very good care of herself. It is because he did not know who she was. She was not. It's, it's about how famous she was not yet, at least to him. That's what it was. That's why he would have overlooked her. He was trying not to wind up with just any old weirdo because he respects women's right to not just be with any old weirdo off the street when they're celebrities. So he was trying to not just wind up with any old weirdo at now that he was somewhat of a celebrity, I mean, he at the very least, he was making a good bit of dough. So even if he wasn't terribly famous, he made enough money to where he could not just simply be taking up any lady on the screen. Because, of course, even if he approached a lady and started talking to her and she didn't know who he was at first, she could go Google him, find that out and be like, oh, he makes this much? His, the minimum estimate of his wealth, because see, nobody really knows that. They could say the minimum estimate of his wealth is five million. I'm like, okay, that's two and a half million when I leave him. So he knew what he, was, what he was doing. He was being smart and protecting himself. And then God looked out for him in terms of a wife. And without the neck rolling and the finger snapping. And you need to come to me. And it's, you can tell this because he didn't say anything derogatory to her. He actually agreed with her. He, she was the one that said, I messaged you first. He didn't say that the first time. He wasn't telling nobody that till she said it. She didn't mind putting that out there. She was pretty much saying to Mr. Owens, you don't have to keep that a secret. I messaged you first. We matched, but I messaged you first. That's fine. You can tell him that. Okay. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She did. She wasn't scared. She took being strong and independent and being a go-getter amongst black women to its natural end and black women are getting on her about it and then blaming him for what she said. It was not about him being zesty. They consider that gay and they always have. I know that because I, when I was younger, I would tell sisters sometimes, this is not something I can just do for free. Literally, willy nilly, all puns intended. I can't just be out here pulling my junk out in front of everybody. And one of the reasons I was saying this to some of the women was because I knew that they had violent tendencies. So I was telling them, you can't expect me to be out here just trying to smash everybody because when you pull your junk out, some of y'all got weapons. And some of y'all like to point sharp objects at men as a joke. You think it's funny, but y'all don't know when y'all play too damn much. Some of y'all are violent. I'm not pulling my junk out around violent women, even if she's violent in a playful manner, but she's actually hitting you or kicking you or something because y'all play too muck and fudge. Oh yeah, Gulf Coast chicks are goofy as hell. They real goofy. Game goofy from everything else. I was telling some of them like that, like you don't just go. And for me, simply saying that you don't pull your junk out in front of everybody. They were like, you sound like a bitch. You're trying to talk like a girl. You don't post to say no. No matter what you say to them, gentlemen. And this is why I understand, even though I don't have to have that. 
I understand why there are some men who have a no lady policy on their channel. They don't know who's going to be like that and they ain't got the time to figure it out. I just happen to already know the list. And shouts out to BGS and uh, Bill all of the features for me being able to find out and for Gail and Knight too for me being able to find out. But other brothers, you know what? And I would say this to you. Do not start conversations with Western sisters you don't know unless it's about work. At the gym, you already know. Now you're being recorded at the gym because they're so mad about the attention they're not getting. They'll turn around and just put you on camera and be like, he's a creep. He's been watching me until I pull this phone out. Just so that they can make themselves feel wanted. It ain't nothing but their version of a teenage dude lying on his ding -a Yeah, I hit. Yeah, man, I got some. Who, man? See her over there? Yeah, man, I hit that earlier. Because he don't want to sit up and say that he didn't get none. It's the same thing for these broads. But what is it for you? It's the trim. If you're going to lie on your ding you're going to say you got that particular trim. And I know I'm using old 70 slang for a reason. Algorithms. What is she going to say? What does she not want anybody to not know that she ain't getting attention? That's proof that attention is currency to them. Stop giving them attention at all gentlemen if you you you're going to see them act this way until the day that they can't post a booty pic on instagram or some other platform and get a compliment from you you could have all the muscles in the world if you don't have some sort of prison tattoos too and you post one of your little uh nude from the top up a nude from the waist up photos they could be like muscles but you know he looked like he responsible that's what you'll get Oh, he in shape, but he, you know, he needs some tat. They'll talk about what you still need. He need a, uh, some tattoos and a goatee. There's something missing all the time. Chick with no titties post a booty chick in a bikini, a, a booty pick in a bikini, but she ain't got no breasts. Dudes be like, man, look at that trunk. Yeah, why don't you talk about the breasts that are missing? Just to give the same energy, since we're in the energy and vibes and all that. Why don't you do that? Just be fair. Better yet, don't say a father mucking thing. There's one thing you can do that is worse in their heads than not saying a father mucking thing. And that is if it's someone that you know, you simply reply under the pick. Are you doing OK? Family good. How's everybody? Job good. Glad you're all right. Take care, ma'am. And put ma'am in there to be formal. Now, that really blows their mind. Because then you're doing exactly what they said they wanted as feminists. You're recognizing the humanity in them and you're not sexualizing them even when they sexualize themselves. And you are making it uh, uh, exactly what it needs to be, a worthless endeavor. They do not want to die loveless and childless. And if they're going to die childless, the only thing worse than that is dying manless and childless. They, they don't want that. And what you need to do is not only allow them to kind of arrive at the grave by themselves, you need to let them know while they are young and alive that that's how they're going to arrive at their grave by themselves, by simply not sexualizing them, even when they sexualize themselves. Because they're just looking for a reason to get you told anyway. I hope that what I've said is a benefit. Thank you so much for listening. Black heart, black mind, black out. Black heterosexual, non-select male power because they don't like it. Black patriarchy until extinction of Judgment Day. And uh, this time when the plane docks, uh, yes, I'm going to ask you to do like uh, Deshaun did. It doesn't have to be the same amount, but I'm going to ask you to do both. Punch the cash app, but only numbers, only put in the numbers that are easy for you. And, but then also, and more importantly, go to the link for the merchandise and get some of that so we can recognize each other in transit and abroad. Thank you all for flying with us on Jet Black Airways, where Jet Black is also a verb. Keep jetting black with us till the wings and the wheels fall off. And thank you again, Compassionate and Callous, for coming up with that image. Gender justice forever.